Did you think that there's any chance you weren't going to win it this year because you'd missed some races? Uh, yeah, I think there's always a chance for, for anything. And, and also, too, you know, I, I think Ryan has a great following as well. And, and obviously him having a great year, um, you know, thought that he would have a shot. And, and also the same for Kevin, you know, finishing up his career and uh, a great career at that. Um, and, and obviously I know our fans uh, pretty well. They're, they're pretty loyal uh, folks. And, you know, I know that they're aware of, of the career that somebody like him had too. So, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't ever take it for granted. You know, I, I think it's an easy thing to look at and, and to uh, think that I would. But, um, you know, I'm always grateful for, for the honor and uh, always, always grateful to, um, to have the support that we've had. And, and, and like I said on stage, this has always been, uh, to me, an extension of, of my family's place in the sport and the success that they had over the years. And, um, you know, the fans have been uh, – great to all of us you know not not just myself but my my entire family so that that's kind of how I look at it and um certainly respect it and and appreciate uh, all that they do for me and and looking forward to seeing the folks uh you know back on the road next year and you sit on stage that you're on schedule to be good for next year Denny said on his surgery that it's going to be tight for him to be ready for the clash so I'm curious is yeah. it are you in the same tight situation or are you pretty um are you gonna be able to be rehab and have full confidence. Yeah, no, I, I feel where I'm at. I mean, when, anytime you have surgery and you go through the process, like any little setback or, or whatever can slow the process down, but thus far everything has gone really well. So, you know, the way I see things today, I don't think there's anything uh, that would make me think that, you know, next year would be compromised at the beginning of the season, uh, including the clash. So uh, my goal is to be rehabbed and feeling good and ready to go for the clash. And then, you know, ultimately, and, and more importantly, you know, Daytona when that time rolls around, which gives you a couple more weeks uh, at that. So, but no, I feel good right now. And um, you know, unless something changes, I should be, should be totally fine. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic, uh, a couple of weeks removed from the season now, has it given you a different perspective or kind of, you know, clarity on what's transpired throughout this whole year? Because it's been a lot. Yeah, def definitely been a lot. Uh, you know, like, like I said on stage, you know, definitely a, a, a season from a competition as aspect that I would love to forget uh, for sure. But, you know, that that's life, uh, as I said up there, too, is, is part of it. And you're going to go through you're going to go through things and you're going to go through periods that, you know, you don't love and you're going to things are going to happen. You know, I missed missed a bunch of races and had two surgeries and, you know, a calendar year was not how I anticipated starting my my 2023. But, you know, that again. That's life, and uh, and I think you learn through those situations, and um, you know sometimes you have to kind of step back and you know realize that you know there are more things uh, to it than going in circles, and you got to put your health first sometimes and try to make the right decisions on long term health, and, and that's really kind of where my headspace was uh, in, in doing my shoulder when I did it and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, hopefully next year, you know we can just get the ball rolling and get off to a good start and just try to you know get a good foundation building from the get-go, which I felt like we were doing at the beginning of this year. I uh, had, a, had a solid couple of weeks there before I got hurt. So um, would like to get that going and, and uh, you know, progress it from there and, and try to get back where we think we can be. Have you and Alan really sat down and kind of gone over this year? I know you guys have talked about it, you know, ongoing, but if you really sat down and kind of dissected, like, you know, this is where things kind of went sideways and maybe we could have done this differently, or is it turning the page to 24 and just that was it, we're in the past and we're moving forward? tough period of time or, you know, time where you're not as competitive as, as you would like to be. I don't think you can just like forget all of that because somewhere in that, in those struggles were lessons that you might need one day to be better and to better yourself in different situations. So no, I don't, I don't think it's just turn the page and forgetting about it. I think it's really thinking through, you know, the areas that we were solid in the areas that we were, you know, okay and decent in and areas that we weren't good in and, and making sure that we, uh, you know, cover all our bases as we're talking about all that stuff. So, yeah, we, we, we're always talking about it, and, you know, we have all year. And I, I really feel like we, we've, we're talking about the right things, and, and we're looking at the right thing. It's just a matter of going and doing it, you know, and it's, it's hard. That's just what it is. It's competitive. Uh, it's a competitive uh, world that, that we live in. So, um, you know, the good news is I, I feel good about the conversations that we're having, and I feel good about the areas that we're putting a lot of focus in, and, um, we'll, we'll go to work and hopefully those things will improve. And, and if they don't, you just go back to work and, and continue to try to get better. It's all you can do. 
Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. Two elite drivers in NASCAR with shoulder injuries wearing shoulder harnesses. Uh, is that a coincidence, or is there something about what you do, you know, in the injury, maybe? I know drivers do necks all the time. They get up on the podium after a race, and they're moving their neck around. What about the shoulder? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, until I had a couple of conversations earlier tonight, it never really crossed my mind. I, I don't think my injury was NASCAR or racing related. Could it have been? Maybe. You know, it's I, it's been going on for a long time. So, um, you know, have I hurt my shoulder in a wreck in the past eight to ten years? Probably. You know, it probably did hurt at some point in time. I, mean, I think that's a fair thing to say. But um, I really think it was more around the high school time period for me, playing ball, you know, through the course of school and things like that, that ultimately just bothered me enough to the point where I wanted to get it looked at. And when I got it looked at, they felt like that surgery was the best option. So, I listened to the doctors from there, but um, potentially so. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, as time goes on, if we see a, a trend with shoulders, you know, maybe it has something to do with being in the car, how our seats are mounted, or maybe. Uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, we'll see as we get down the road. But I just felt like, for me, it was the right thing to do. And it was really, really pretty last minute uh, as well. It wasn't really something I had planned for a long time. It just – I knew I needed to get the ball rolling on trying to get some answers and um, – as you all know, the off season's so short. If you're going to have a procedure done, you have to do it pretty quick. So that was, um, you know, that was a thought process for me. Now, Denny told us today that it was more serious than he thought yeah. and or that it was going to be. And not only is the clash in jeopardy in L.A., but sim racing during the off season preparing might be tough. Will you be able to do sim racing during the off season? You'll be at the clash. You said you hope so. Pretty much feeling good about that. Yeah. What about like sim racing? Um, until I get the okay to get back to just normal life, I'm not, you know, going to be driving anything with my right arm, you know, so, um, and obviously you use that in the race car. So until I get okay to get back to working out and, you know, normal functioning day-to-day -day activities, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything just because it's not worth hurting this thing at this point. I've already had the procedure. So why, you know, why backtrack and try to jump the gun and do something too quick again, as I mentioned a second ago, your your health and your long term life and getting around and those things are important and they should be and uh, this is a piece of that. Well, congratulations on being the most thank popular driver and thanks for all the interviews. Yeah, thank you, Chase. Congratulations, the most popular driver award. So NASCAR is headed to Phoenix for a, a test for a new short track package later on this season. What do you think the solution is for the short track package, and what would you like to see come out of that? Um, I, to be totally honest, I've been so tied up with this surgery and stuff I have no idea what they're even testing uh, or, or when they're testing so um, I, I really don't know I, I know that the short tracks certainly have not been a strong point from a uh, you know entertainment standpoint in the last couple of years and, and I know they're working really hard to try to make that better because you know prior to that was it was kind of opposite almost it's interesting how it's changed but um, I have no idea what the solution is I, I really don't I mean I always think having more power, you know, more, more motor is a good thing. And, and, but, you know, you start down that road and uh, immediately that's like, oh, you know, more cost, you know, with, with having more power and turning more RPM and, you know, rebuild motors more often. So, you know, I, I think the wish list, you know, to be candid, I think the wish list of items that I would look at are just not going to happen. So it's probably better I just, you know, focus on going as fast as I can and whatever, you know, whatever they, whatever rule book they give us to, to work with, you know. Please, Spencer Chase. Um, is there a responsibility that comes with most popular driver? I mean, do you feel any added, I don't know, responsibility to the fans to present yourself in a way that they can look up to you and admire? Um, I mean, I, t to be honest, I, I feel like I've just always tried to, always tried to be me, you know, the best, the best way I know how and, and to carry myself in a manner that, um, that I feel like is right. You know, do I always get that right? No, you know, probably not. Um, but I, I certainly, you know, try to in, in most scenarios, but I don't, I don't wake up in the morning and be like, oh yeah, you know, you're NASCAR's most popular driver. You need to go act a certain way. I mean, no, I, I think it, that's probably a, that's a bit of a reach, but you know, I, I certainly respect the honor and I don't take it lightly. And, you know, but look, I, I understand my, I understand my, uh, spot in line of, of my family's heritage and racing. And, and I, I feel like it's always been an extension of, of their presence here in, in NASCAR and the success they had and the many years that they spent traveling around 
doing this stuff. Um, and for me, I'm just you know fortunate to have the opportunity to to do this uh, for a living and you know try to carry that forward as much as I can. So I, I, I honestly don't. I mean, I I don't I don't change my course of action based on the award or not. I just try to do things the best way I know how, you know, in a given circumstance and, um, you know, try to be nice to the folks that, that support us and, and make sure that we, you know, support them the best way we can, uh, you know, from my seat too. So, uh, this award's always been about the fans and, um, I'm grateful for them.